In the south of Ukraine, in the port of Berdyansk, Russian warship has been hit by a Ukrainian missile. In this video and in these photos, you can see the Russian landing craft Orsk burning. Russia only has four of these vessels. Three of those are in the Black Sea. One of them is out of order and one of them was just hit. That means Russia only has one left in the Black Sea and they cannot bring any more because Turkey has blocked the Phosphorus Strait. Ukrainians hit the ship with their Tochka missile system, its Soviet-made tactical missile complex. This is a huge blow for the Russian Navy. Berdyansk was the main port in the south that Russians used for their transport of supply and military vehicles. Immediately after this hit, Russians withdrew all of their ships from that port. The United States of America is sending Ukraine some Soviet-made S-300 anti-aircraft defense systems. This sentence sounds weird. Turns out that USA had a secret project worth up to a hundred million dollars for which they acquired some Soviet tech to research it. It included, with other stuff, some S-300 anti-aircraft defense systems, more commonly known in NATO as SA-10. What's next? USA has a secret stash of T-72 tanks, but this is a huge deal. It doesn't matter that these systems are old, they're still very potent. And if Ukrainians have managed to shoot down enemy fighters with Stinger missiles, they're gonna have a hell lot of success with these S-300 systems. A little bit of background info about the S-300. It was first deployed in the Soviet Union in 1979 and it is used by dozens of countries up to nowadays as a main air defense system. And actually four countries in NATO use it as their main air defense system. It's fully automated. It can track up to 24 targets at once. It can target and shoot down targets flying up to Mach 2.5. Missile acceleration is 100 Gs. That means it takes 100 seconds for the missile to reach the speed of 1 km per second. Russia has already lost 100 planes over Ukraine. This number is going to skyrocket now. Before we go on to the battlefield, I want to zoom out to look at the effect of the sanctions. I see some people viewing the sanctions as a soft weapon without any effect. Largest Russian tank and armored personnel carrier manufacturer, Ural Wagon Zavod, which means Ural Wagon Factory. And the second largest Russian tank manufacturer, Chelyabinsk Tractor Plant, they both have ceased production. Like totally, full stop no production because they're out of parts. Both of these plants and, and almost the entire Russian military actually heavily relied on foreign parts and specifically western made parts. Sanctions have totally ceased the export of these parts to Russia. These are microchips ball bearings. You can't make any kind of vehicle without ball bearings. So as of now, Russia will not be making any new tanks or BMPs or BTRs or any other armored personnel carriers and they're not repairing them also. These two factories were the main factories responsible for re repairing Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers. What they have is what they have. This is the effect of sanctions. My friends, I want to thank five new patrons for supporting this channel. I'll be reading the names as Estonian. Year of bleeding is guaranteed. Colin McEon. Jaak Krebs. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up with this. Tlaloc Harrison Aleman Rodriguez, Lisa More, Captain Shakin. Thank you to these five people for supporting the channel. If you like my videos, then the Patreon link is in the description below. If you become tier 10 or above Patreon, I'll be reading your name. Thank you, my friends. Let's go to the battlefield. The biggest battles have been happening throughout the northeast and east, throughout the northeast and east of Ukraine. Northern Ukraine, the vicinity of Kiev remains the same. There are rumors that Russian forces are surrounded in Irpin, Puka and Hostomel, but these are only rumors, I cannot confirm them. And personally, as a soldier, I don't think it's true. For what I know, Ukrainians don't yet have strong enough forces to surround Russians near Kiev. Take it with a grain of salt. In the northeast, there is a city, Sumy. Now it doesn't show on this map, but it is almost, if not fully, cut off from the rest of Ukraine. Heavy battles were today and yesterday going on near Okhturka. It's a small town that Russians want to take, they're surrounding it, but they have not been able to take it. This city holds the direct route to Sumy, so if this city is taken, the last lifeline to Sumy is cut. 
Ukrainians as of now they're beating the Russians back near Ohturka. To the very east of Ukraine there is Izium. I've mentioned this town before, it is still holding on and still active battles and assaults to that city are going on. Ukrainians have defended good and destroyed a lot of Russian tech in that line. I'll carry on with the front lines later. Ukraine forces have destroyed Russian jamming and communication stations. Stations like these are responsible for electronic warfare. This station was called R330 Zitel and it is expensive. It is one of these things that Russia cannot produce anymore. Electronic warfare systems, they require a lot of microchips and technology that Russia imports, but thanks to sanctions this import has ceased. So every lost system is a very expensive loss and cannot be replaced. R330 is designed to detect analyze, locate and jam satellite communications and cellular communications. So this system is responsible for at least attempting to jam Elon Musk's Starlink to Ukrainians. As much as we know they have not been very effective with it. But it is also used to order fire missions on Ukrainian telephone locations. If you have troops on the ground and they have their telephones on, you have these hotspots of cellular activity in the forest. Well, it's not civilians, obviously. It's an army group who are fidgeting with their mobile phones. So it's quite easy to just order a fire mission on it. So these systems are very dangerous. The usage of tank mines has strongly increased in the past weeks. In this video, you can see what a tank mine does to a tank. It fully destroys it. Nothing is left from it. Here is a video of Ukrainian civilians walking past the tank mines. Yes, tank mines do not trigger when you walk past them, but they do when you drive over them with a vehicle. I handle these mines personally in the military. They're very easy to handle. You don't have to do anything. Put it in place, fasten the charge on top of it, and it's ready to go. And they're also very easy to produce, so I'm guessing there are already thousands of them on Ukrainian soil. As you can see, these mines are not hidden. purpose of mines, of course, is to destroy vehicles if they're stupid enough to drive over them, even if the vehicle is not driving over them and stopping before the mines because they see the mines. It still does the purpose. The purpose is to stop the advance of Russian armored columns. They need to take the time, follow the procedures and clear the road of the mines which all takes time, allowing Ukrainians to detect the armored column and perhaps set up an ambush. So these mines are doing their work even if they're on plain sight. In the previous video I mentioned that Russian forces are digging in near Kiev. The fact that they're doing this means that they have lost their attacking momentum and now they're planning to stay on defensive for a long time. In this photo you can see the devastating effect of top attack. I don't mean javelin, I mean artillery and airstrikes. They're digging in their tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and even trucks. This will keep them safe from RPG fire and laws but not from airstrikes and artillery. The Soviet-Afghan war which happened from 1979 to 1989, Soviet Union lost about 15,000 men in that conflict. Lost as in KIA, not wounded. And it took 10 years to achieve that number. Russia has lost the same amount of men in one month. Let's go back to the battlefield to the east of Ukraine. We have the city of Rubizhne. Heavy battles have been going around that city for almost a week. Ukrainians are holding the city, Russians are assaulting it. A lot of Russian troops have found their end in that city. But as far as we know now, Russians are not able to take it. The southern city, the last holdout, Mariupol. Fully surrounded and now Russians have breached into the city. Russians offered surrender to the city with a term that Ukrainians could actually just walk out of their city, but they have to leave their weapons. Well, Ukrainians use the famous phrase, Russian warship, go f*** yourself. Mariupol unfortunately cannot be rescued by Ukrainian forces because Russians control the area around it of about 100 kilometers. Counterattack this large would require hundreds and thousands of men. Ukraine has these numbers in mobilization, but they're still in training. It is clear that Russia does not care about the city. They have worked their asses off to bombard the hell out of it and destroy every building. They're trying to raise the city to the ground. We know that people of Mariupol don't want to surrender the city. If we go further west from Mariupol, there is Mykolaiv and Kherson. And there is the famous Kherson airport. That is for some reason still Russia's favorite spot to send equipment to die. Ukrainians just keep bombarding the hell out of that Kherson airport and Russians just keep sending new tech and new troops into it. Don't know why another two attacks have happened 
with big Russian losses. I actually reached out to a YouTuber called Gendit Commando. Here's Gendit Commando, his link is in the description below. Hi guys, my name's Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marines Commando from the United Kingdom. I'd like to start by saying thank you to Arda, the Estonian soldier, for doing this joint video together and allowing me to be part of his channel for this said video. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. Now, to understand the state of the Russian invasion force, we have to go back to the pre-invasion exercise that Russia was holding with its co-aggressor, Belarus. More specifically, the behavior of the troops. This report from a Belarusian local describes it like this. The soldiers have settled in the surrounded forests. They drink a lot and sell a lot of their diesel fuel. They are living in tents. This brief report tells us what post-Soviet countries already know from their experiences with the Red Army. Russian army discipline is low and there is rampant corruption. Let's take this example. The unit commander sells most of their fuel given to his unit for training. He takes the money for himself and forces his men to say that they actually did the training. What's the outcome? Well, men are not trained. Vehicles are out of fuel. Russian troops are inactive. Take to the bottle. Red Army style. The same source out continues. Over a stretch of three kilometers, there were a hundred litre trash bags every 20 meters, as well as vodka bottles, empty plastic beer kegs, and empty cookie packages. This was the state of the troops before the invasion. During the Russo Belarusian joint exercise, and then the invasion started. Go and check out Gendit Commando in the description below. Russian forces have been seen using Chinese made Bao Feng walkie talkies. This is a civilian walkie talkie that costs about 50 to 100 dollars. Its reach is about 3 to 5 kilometers and it's not cryptid. It's nothing you want to be using on the battlefields. That tells us that Russia does not have the money to buy proper radio stations for its infantry or, thanks to sanctions, it doesn't have the ability to produce them themselves. Ukrainian forces have also captured something big. This is not a regular tank or a BMP. This is a Russian electronic warfare jammer, Krasuka 4. For example, it jams United States AWOCs that are flying around on the Black Sea. And these AWOCs are giving a lot of information to Ukrainian forces. Well, this Krasuka 4 is responsible for jamming this communication. This is one of the newest pieces of tech of Russian electronic warfare and CIA is going crazy for it. I'm pretty sure Ukrainians are going to just give it to the CIA or sell it or exchange it for something. First of all, it's a very expensive loss for the Russians and second of all, Western powers want to research Russian tech. How good is it or how bad is it? My friends, thank you for watching this video. If you like my channel, you can subscribe or become a patron of the channel. Link is in the description below. Until my next video, stay cool my friends. Slava Ukraini!